Welcome to Brand Lover, honest, real, and lively conversations for flourishing entrepreneurs and budding business owners on a mission to cultivate a heartfelt brand that connects with their purpose-driven mission. My hope is that you walk away feeling inspired and refreshed with a weekly takeaway in your back pocket that you can apply to your life or business. Welcome to another enlightening week on the Brand Lover podcast. I'm very excited to share this very special guest with you, um, Caitlin Mawaha, and I'm hoping that (laughs) I pronounced that correctly. We didn't practice beforehand, um, but yeah, beautiful Caitlin was kind enough to send me an email teaching me how to pronounce her name. Um, from stay-at-home mom to part home, part-time home, part stylist and now a successful successful digital CEO in just seven years, Caitlin's career in the fashion industry has been a whirlwind. Caitlin's philosophy is style made simple and the basis of her program is around sharing her knowledge with everyday women so that they feel empowered to make the right style choices for their individual body shape, lifestyle and budget. This philosophy makes her incredibly popular with everyday women, but not so popular with the styling industry. I'm excited to deep dive into that. As a young woman with very self-limiting beliefs around her potential to earn money, stepping into entrepreneurial shoes has required her to do a lot of work around mindset, confidence and determination. So thank you so much, Caitlin. My absolute pleasure. Welcome to the podcast. I am just itching I'm itching to um to ask you all these questions but first of all the most important question did I pronounce your surname correctly pretty much it's a very it's a very scary surname um Marwaha it's literally as it's spelled but there's like so many a's and a w and an i it freaks people out so good on you for giving a go because most people just avoid it I gave it a red hot go I think I got the inflections a little bit wrong so thank you for being so forgiving so Caitlin tell us a little bit about you in your own words because I know that like that bio is incredible and I can't wait to sort of really pick that apart and unpack it a little bit but who are you who is Caitlin so I am, um, I was going to say how old I am and I don't quite know, 33, I think. <laughs> you know, just, it all kind of rolls into one. Um, I'm a 33-year-old mum to two. I've got a seven-year-old daughter, Hazel, and a six-year-old uh, son, Alexander. We live on the beautiful Mornington Peninsula in Melbourne. Um, and I'm a style coach, I guess I, is my title now, basically a personal stylist, but I pretty much exclusively work online now. So I've got an online membership group. And I run a course three times a year. So this little tiny little Zoom screen um, is pretty much where I spend most of my day. Yeah. Wow. And that's, I mean, that's, it's just such a shift, isn't it, from the traditional days of personal styling in store. Um, And I guess particularly through this pandemic period, it's something that is much needed. And how exciting that you're able to deliver that to to so many women, like being able to reach them um, must be really fulfilling for you. It absolutely is. Um, And I'm very lucky that my business has survived and thrived even within this crazy kind of two years particularly being in Melbourne where we've really been hit almost the hardest um, in Australia and the fact that I can support women and reach more women um, than I ever could if I was only doing one-on-one shopping sessions is amazing and you're right it's incredibly fulfilling and rewarding. Yeah. So let's rewind a little bit. And because you start your story as a stay at home mum. So what did that entail for you? And what did you do before that? So I was young, I was very young, particularly for this day and age when I um, had Hazel. So I was 25 when I was um, pregnant with her. And that was a, a very conscious choice. I was like, ready to be a mom I thought I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom yeah Um, I didn't really have a career to leave essentially Um, I was working in retail I was managing um, some stores and I and I loved that but it wasn't really a big picture plan Um, and so I had Hazel and then 
very quickly and unexpectedly fell pregnant with Alexander. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, and, you know, what happens for a lot of women, very common story, I kind of found myself completely in a new world. And for hubby, he was traveling overseas, he was doing his day job, he was going to the gym every day, and his life kind of continued on for quite a while as normal. And I was like, hang on, is is this what my life looks like? And I then realized that I, in fact, did not want to be a stay-at-home yeah. mom. <laughs> um, and I was quite surprised to find that I w- was quite ambitious. And I never had thought that I was ambitious, um, maybe because I hadn't thought about a big career. Um, but I then realized I wanted to work. I wanted to earn my own money. Um, I just wanted a different kind of life for myself. So slowly, slowly, I started to explore what that might look like. Mm -hmm. I think that is, you you just epitomised basically my journey as well. Very similar. I think that's so, so relatable and so refreshing to, for you to express um, so honestly, the fact that when we do become mums, something shifts and something changes and I was exactly like you I didn't consider myself very ambitious prior to being a mum something changed like it was like a chemical change (laughs) I don't know that all of a sudden it's you know it's this pathway there and it's so exciting that we can sort of you know each one sort of fuels the other and you know without um I don't know about you but without my business i I wasn't as good a mum, I feel, as I am now. Like, and they sort of work together. It's so exciting. But um, so thank you. Thank you for sharing so honestly. Um, I think a lot of people will relate to that. But how did you take the leap to becoming a stylist and why? Like how obviously you're working in retail fashion, but mm-hmm. what, you know, what was it that made you choose that pathway and how did you do it? So um, again, it wasn't something that I, you know, was like, I want to be a stylist. And it's, and it wasn't that like when I was growing up, you know, I wasn't like super creative and really into fashion and and things. Um, But I, when I was a stay at home mom and I was like, what can I do for myself? Mm -hmm. And so I started a blog. Um, and that was back when blogs were a thing, you know, yeah. a very popular thing. Um, and I started a fashion blog and it was literally, it was so embarrassing. It was called The Mummy Style Files. So embarrassing. But anyway, <laughs> we all start somewhere and the totally. fact is he started. So, <laughs> and it was fun. very, it was a very, like, it was the in thing to do. The mummy blogging um, was taking off. And I literally just posted photos of my outfits you know, and, and yeah. what I was doing. Um, and I think that just the way that things unfold, things become um, like enter your orbit. And then I started to see this idea of styling and, and understanding what that was. And so I eventually did a course. Um, and this is over, you know, a couple of years because I was the primary caregiver. So yes. I was blogging at night you know uploading a a photo who knows how many people were reading it Um, and I still was like I had to do the mum thing during the day and I had two kids 14 months apart so but I always knew that if I was taking the time to blog up at night late at night then it was something I was passionate about because Mm -hmm. you know you would know yourself that if you're not passionate about it, and particularly when you're a young mum with no time and no energy, um, you don't do it. Exactly. Um, but it was it was for me because I was uh, making the time for it that I knew that it was something that I could explore. So over probably three or four years, it was such a case of like small, tiny steps forward, um, never with a big plan to have like a multi six figure business by the time it was you know 2021 like that yeah. was a plan yeah but I knew that there was something there so I eventually did a course um eventually started to get clients um I worked for a brand called Feather and Noise um as their stylist which was a great start I had some really good um gigs that kind of got me in the door with some tv styling and things like that um and it it literally was just a slow slow building and I knew that I was doing it behind the scenes or slowly a couple of days a week that when my kids did go to school 
Um, and this year is my first year of both kids being at school that I was ready to fly. And yeah. so that's what I always say to women who are at home in the trenches with the little kids and yeah. they want to do something and they look at me and they're like, oh, you do all this and you've got so much time, you've got such a big business. It's really just laying the foundation so that yeah. when your time opens up, you really can run with it, which is what I've now been able to do. Yes. I just got goosebumps. <laughs> it's so true. It's all that, you know, those baby steps are what's yeah. going to eventually compound. We call it the compound effect. And at yeah, at some point, once you sort of, it's almost like it's at a simmer. So you're at that sort of at stage where it's just on simmer. And then, yeah, same sort of thing with me when all of our kids went off to school, it was like, I've been pulling back and pulling back and pulling back. And then all of a sudden, let's do this thing. And yeah, and it's just, it's all, I think it's all about recognizing the seasons that you're in as well, because you don't want to miss anything in favor of, um, I don't know, the, 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 the grind um, for the sake of it. So so I just love everything that you're saying, but I just, I just now would love to chat about, so this part in your bio mm -hmm. where it says that you're incredibly popular with the everyday woman, and that's obviously your ideal client, that's who you're serving, that's who your heart sort of, um, you know, shows up for, but you're not so popular in the styling industry because of that. So why is that? And how do you cope with any backlash that you receive? So um, it, I'm, I'm a funny kind of stylist in that even though I used to do it, um, you know, I would take you around the shops, you know, it cost um, a couple of hundred dollars just for my time plus, you know, your money on top of that. Yeah. Um, but what really didn't sit well with me was like, what next? Like, what do you do then next time you want to go shopping? And what yeah. do you do? next year when you want to go shopping and, and what happens if you have a baby or you lose weight or you put on weight or you go through menopause or you know whatever like then you're back to square one and do you come and pay me you know six hundred dollars again or do you sit in this kind of cycle and so I want to give you knowledge so I want to say hey Rachel this is how you find your body shape this is what this means so that you're really empowered every single time you go shopping. So it's kind of like I give away all of the industry secrets. Yeah. Um, and my membership is very low cost. It's only $29 a month. So, you know, it's it's a yeah. bit of a steal. Um, Accessible. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Because I don't want this idea of working with a stylist to be only for, like, the rich and famous or, you know, only like for that stay-at-home mom who has to save all her pennies for eight months before she can do it. But then, as I was saying, what happens when the season changes? What happens yeah. when it's winter then? Um, yeah. So, yeah, just this idea of making fashion and style really accessible and affordable for all women, um, making it more about knowledge than like, hey, you have to go and buy this pink top. It's like buy this pink top because it's going to suit your body shape because of X, Y, and Z. So um, I don't have a lot of backlash that comes to, to me but I know that there are other stylists who are you know doing different things yeah um but I'm not concerned about that because there are some women out there that do want to go shopping and there yeah. are some women that will be able to uh, work with a stylist every uh three months or every four months um and so that's fine and that's the yeah. beautiful thing about such a competitive industry and it's a very saturated industry but I'm truly uh, believe that it's a vibe thing. So if you vibe with me, you'll come to the squad. If you don't vibe with me, you'll go to another stylist. And, and I think that, you know, it's not something that we need to be um, conscious of or, you know, scared of about this scarcity of um, work. Yeah, absolutely. And also just having that inner confidence, I guess, knowing who your perfect customer is and not letting anything else get in the way of that or get distracted by what other people are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what is it then that makes you so passionate about empowering everyday women to embrace their own personal style? Like how did that, what, why, how did that start? 
I think it comes back to me. Like I had the same um, experience when I had two kids within 14 months of each other. I myself was in this body that I was like, what do I do (laughs) with this body now? You know, my hips were wider, my feet were bigger. But more than that, I just lost my mojo. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was in the trenches with the kids. I didn't know if I was allowed to wear a short skirt. I don't know if you went through that, but you're like, oh, I I still go through that. I (laughs) bought a short skirt recently and I brought it home and put it on. And I said to my husband, is this too short for a mum of four? (laughs) And he's like, yeah. (laughs) I'll just wear it. Totally, yeah. Um, and, And it was such a, I don't know, um, crisis of identity probably more than body shape or like body but mm. that's what we often fixate on is the kind of outer shell yes. and it truly wasn't until I got my styling qualification with the plan to help other women that I started to apply it back to me um, that I saw that own transformation in my style and knowing how I am today um you know I don't have an extensive closet I don't have um I don't go shopping every day but I know that I can go into my wardrobe whatever the occasion and I can pick something that's going to fit my body shape and it's going to flatter me and the colors are right and all of that and I just want that for other women and that's what really lights me up because I know what it's like to be on the other end of that that is so beautiful and I love that because that's so aligned and that's a, that's what you were talking about before with staying up late with the blogging like that's mm-hmm. having that real personal connection to what you're doing is what gives you the drive to wake up every day and keep keep going uh, which kind of leads me to my next question um, so you know building a brand obviously mm-hmm. we're on brands love a podcast so building your mm-hmm. brand over the last however many years um, how do you think that um, confidence in dressing, which you were just speaking about, has an effect in attracting your perfect customer? I guess not just in your industry, but I don't know, in my industry or anybody else out there, especially because we are so, um, our brands are so human now. We're showing up on Instagram, whether it's a product or a service, whatever. We're talking on stories and, you know, how does the way that you are dressing, the way that you feel about your own dressing um, affect that? Yeah. I I love this question because Mm -hmm. I think it's something that many, particularly business owners, overlook in -hmm. terms of their personal brand. I think personal brand and personal style is, as you said, particularly now that we're so visible, Mm -hmm. um, they're truly, truly aligned. And when they're not aligned, then there's this really clear sense of misalignment with your messaging. Um, And it's a huge opportunity for business owners to embrace their personal style and align it with their personal brand. I think um, what's great about the world that we're living in now is that there is so much freedom and flexibility with what we can wear. Like I, even with dress codes at work, we're really moving away from this corporate um, suit and tie or, you know, like a skirt suit for women Mm -hmm. and it's smart casual or it's elevated business or, um, you know, it's just, we can express ourselves and our style a lot more, but if you are a business owner, I think, when you truly step into your personal style, whatever it is, you could have the most serious business, but like most eclectic, playful personal style. But if it's super true to you, people really see that. Mm -hmm. And when you see someone who is confident and stands in their personal style, um, I feel like it's so obvious and everyone's really drawn to that confidence, Mm -hmm. um, even if they can't articulate what it is. And so I think when women particularly can do the work to find out what their personal style is, whether it's colourful or super girly or whatever, if they can stand in it and embrace it, it just makes their own personal branding that much stronger. Yes, I love that. And I love that perspective. Um, And I'm interested, I guess, 
you know, just from the perspective of depending on what your offer is, say, for example, you are offering some kind of really luxury product that has a really high price tag Mm -hmm. and then you saw the owner show up in their fluffy Kmart slippers. Mm -hmm. Like how does that, how does that work? Because I know some people do encourage that type of thing and that type of vulnerability or authenticity. Um, I would love to know your personal opinion about about that and the you know the um the disconnect I I feel but (laughs) but how does that yeah how does that work I think it depends if it's like truly authentic to them like if they um have this you know offer that is super high price but they're saying that you can be whoever you want to be like you don't have to be this kind of millionaire that to buy Mm -hmm. this product um I feel like it's okay. I think if it's um, someone who has like, it's like going to a hairdresser and they're like, we're the best hairdressers, but their hair is bad. Then I feel like yeah. then that's misaligned because yes. if you're, yes. if you're, um, yes. <laughs> if you're, I don't know, what, what's another example? Um, if you're some kind of like attention to detail service yeah. and you look messy, yeah. then I think then that's misaligned. But I don't think that you have to, like, I don't have to say, hey, my price point is low um, and therefore I only shop at, like, low price point stuff. I think it's fine for for me to be, you know, like, I shop at luxury brands, but you can have this accessible product and vice versa. Yeah. Um, I think that's fine if it's aligned, but if if you're trying to sell something, like if your branding was terrible, then it would be yeah. like, why would I go to you? And I often yeah. look at copywriters or um, uh, like social media managers and their social media is crappy, then yeah. that's, that's where I feel like. Yeah, like if they've got 1,200 posts and only 29 followers. Yeah, yeah. And, but they're going to help us. Yeah, grow yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that's 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 a great way to answer that question because it really does come down to um their messaging, I guess, and yeah. who they're trying to attract and what their purpose is. So I guess you're right. It's it's just it's a whole bunch of different very variables. Yeah. Um and it comes down to your own unique brand. And I guess being um being conscious of that and again knowing your customer. Yeah. I am um, my business coach is a great example because she's super super successful mm-hmm. you know multi-million dollar business coach and she gives an example that for years and years and years she thought she had to do presentations um in a suit in like corporate mm-hmm. attire because she's like I'm a business coach so you know I need yeah. to show up and be business and professional yeah so people to take me serious and it probably was a little true more true like a couple of years ago Mm. than 15 years ago but she has like she loves color like rainbow and so now she shows up and she's authentically who she is all of her branding is multicolored Mm. um all of her advertising is multicolored and she wears like rainbow striped jumpers and stuff and it's and it's very very aligned to her and she's her own brand so she is like, I'm a business coach and I'll get you to the next level. And, you know, I've made millions of dollars, but I love to have fun. And, and this is my you know, personality. Yeah, I love that. I'm putting her own stamp on it. And yeah, yeah and people certainly do pick up on that. Um, okay, so what's one mindset? I know that we've, we have chatted about sort of the mindset, that work that you've had to do because you just always assumed that you were going to be a stay-at-home mom um, and never had big ambitions to earn six figures or anything. So, yeah. you know, if you could share one mindset lesson, um, perhaps with with someone who's in those trenches, you know, the early mom days who know, you know, she knows that she's called for a higher purpose. Maybe she's feeling frustrated that she's in this situation um, and she can sort of she just can't break through that um maybe she's thinking about starting her business and she's I don't know impatient what would you recommend yeah so um so many things and and things will work differently for different people for me it was um constantly disproving to myself so if I I believed that I couldn't do it and then um disproved it did it you know I I achieved a milestone um 
And that takes time to for that to happen. I think as you get a bit bigger, you can level up quicker. Um, but I think just starting is is the best thing to do. Um, just starting something. Um, and so that was for me, I feel like one of my biggest strengths is feeling the fear, but doing it anyway. I'm, I'm really good at jumping into action. Yeah. Um, and then I've got so many mindset things that I do every day, um, meditation, positive affirmations. I got my goals written up here and I see them every single day. Mm -hmm. And I think just um, moving forward with those things and, and being really diligent about your mindset. Um, I think it's really true that thoughts lead to actions. Mm -hmm. And so what you think is what you can become. Um, and so it's, you just have to kind of feel the fear, do it anyway, start, and then you will disprove those beliefs to yourself. I thought I could never, ever make $100,000. Um, and then I made a hundred thousand dollars. You know, and I was like, okay, I guess I can do it. You know, and then yeah. as you, whatever it is, I could never start a business. I could never do an Instagram live. You know, you do the Instagram live. I used to be so nervous doing Instagram lives. I'd prepare for like two hours before it. I, you know, I was like, what if they ask me a question? I don't know the answer to. I have to yeah. be expert. Um, and you just have to keep doing it. And so I couldn't do an Instagram live. I did it. Um, I can't, can't do a podcast interview. You do one and you're like, okay, I can. Um, and you just keep disproving it to yourself. I love that. I love that. And I love the whole philosophy of just keeping on pushing those boundaries of the comfort zone until that comfort zone expands. Yeah. Just keep on doing it and doing it and doing it until all of a sudden it's not so scary anymore. I love yeah. that. Okay. So what's next for you? What's Great the question. Honestly, the most exciting thing is a bit of a break. <laughs> yeah. I have, I've been pushing pretty hard for two years, um, getting the, the new virtual business and the membership and the courses off the ground. And it's been the best fun, um, but kind of juggling homeschool with the kids and, yeah, wow. um, you know, pretty much two years in lockdown. Yeah. So I've got about three more weeks of work and then, a bit of a break over uh, Christmas and January and I'm just rinsing and repeating I'm at that stage of yeah. um, my business where it's rinse and repeat don't if it ain't broke don't fix it um, which is tricky yeah. for me because I love new things <laughs> we're always creating aren't we <laughs> yeah so um, that'll be my challenge next year is just to you know go keep going with the flow um, consolidation I yeah. love that dial it in yeah that's exciting that's so exciting because yeah just you've seen yourself the potential um yes. and now wow look out look out 2022 totally and 22 is my lucky number so I feel like it's oh, gonna be a good year amazing oh, I <laughs> or love I'm just that. totally jinxed myself <laughs> oh me. no you haven't touch <laughs> wood you'll be fine and you know like oh my goodness look at what you've achieved over these last two years with all these things been thrown at you including mm -hmm homeschool and lockdown and you've still yeah, exponentially grown your business it's incredible it's so inspiring Caitlin and thank you I just want to thank you so much for coming and sharing your wisdom with me and I've loved hearing your story I know that the ladies listening will as well so where can we find you where can they come and follow you learn oh see your amazing reels by the way yeah. share yeah. your Instagram handle because we've got to get those it goes it goes a mention oh thank you so much for having me um and thank you for creating such a safe space for a chat um i am at on instagram at by caitlin ann so no stress about my scary sound it's not in there anywhere <laughs> you notice i haven't mentioned it again yeah it's good. Um, <laughs> although my website is caitlinmarohar.com but just go to instagram and all the links are there um and then if you're interested in the membership or checking out the courses um they're all on my website um but yeah instagram is the best place to find me i'm there every day sharing it's probably too much again too much information absolutely but... not absolutely not i love following you it's amazing so thank you so much again and ladies my pleasure. go and check her out thank you so much for listening if you loved this week's episode of brand lover Take a screenshot of wherever you're listening and share your biggest takeaway on Instagram or Facebook. And don't forget to tag me. I'd love to give you a shout out and thank you personally. 
Also feel free to subscribe and leave a review to help the Brand Lover podcast reach more heart-aligned entrepreneurs just like yourself. Thanks again and I'll see you next week.